The, uh, the wallet, when I was looking at that particular problem, I was finding that uh, the materials that were used, uh, there was nothing necessarily wrong with them, it was just the way that they were being put together. Predominantly in, in wallets, you, there are very thin layers of leather that are used, and so when the stitching is applied to those, the stitching has nowhere else to sit but on the surface. So if a wallet is going in and out of a pocket all the time, that exposed thread will eventually wear away because it's getting abrasion. So the idea was to introduce a very thick external layer of leather and then countersink the stitching so that it's protected by the external layer itself. That then delivered uh, another uh, function for me in that it created quite a lot of fibre memory and stiffness. So the wallet had to be moulded shut. Now instead of uh, stitching another seam along the spine to introduce a, a sleeve for the money clip to sit in, I could actually harness that stiffness that was now introduced. Similar to folding a piece of paper, if we have a plain sheet of paper and it's standing up or attempting to stand and hold its own weight, it can't because it's too soft. Whereas if we fold a, uh, a fold through the centre of it, all of a sudden it can actually now stand upright. We haven't done anything except for change the shape of the material, but it's delivering an auxiliary function to us. So instead of introducing another seam to the spine of the wallet, I could change the shape of the money clip and weave that money clip through that rigid spine wet mould it and close it, and then we have the materials that are thrust together, but they're solving the problem in unison. Instead of compromising the leather to accommodate the steel, the steel and the leather are, comp are being working together in harmony and, uh, and create a unique aesthetic uh, as a benefit from that as well.